What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at this anamorphic streaks kind of lens flare effect because we obviously don't have enough lens flare content on this channel. Um, but anyhow, I think this is going to be an effect that you really like. Um, it's pretty useful, versatile. But uh, just a quick thing, I'm pretty busy at the moment. So there will be no jokes in this video. I repeat, there will be no jokes in this video. I, I just don't have time for that. I'm sorry. Not, not that people like my jokes anyway. But uh, let's jump straight into the effect. First thing we're going to need. Uh, by the way, I have this background plate I downloaded from Unsplash. I'll put the link in the description. The first thing we're going to need is, uh, other than the, the, the base plate, we're going to need... Uh, streaks texture now the way i like to make this is using the fractal noise plugin in photopea but if you don't have that if you're using photoshop or some you can create gradient noise instead creating a gradient fill layer selecting the gradient icon choosing noise you can randomize it if you want if you set the angle to 90 degrees and convert this layer to a smart object, uh, you'll get a noise texture that's similar to one you could create using the Fractal Noise plugin. But I'm going to use a, the Fractal Noise plugin because it gives you better results faster. So in the Fractal Noise plugin, there's an option called Base Frequency that you can adjust to kind of change the size, the scaling of the noise. Uh, if you actually take the X value and set it to zero, it creates horizontal streaks, which is what we want. And then you can mess with the, the Y base frequency to change the height of the streaks. Then tune up the octaves just so that you get all the detail you need. And we're gonna add this to document. Set its blend mode to screen. First thing I want to do is change the contrast of this streaks texture because right now it kind of looks just like a, a lump, a blob of streaks. So I'll press Control L, open up levels, and uh, bring down the shadows by a good bit. I think maybe some like this, All right? Nice. The same thing for the midtones. But at this point it's too dark. So I will bring up the highlights to retain that brightness that I need. So I'll hit OK. Now I just need to isolate the streaks to the area of the image where I want them. And uh, usually we'd use Frac uh, sorry, usually we'd use uh, like a raster mask for something like this, but I have a pretty cool technique that I think you're going to like. So I'll create a black color fill layer beneath the streaks texture, and I'll actually set the blend mode of the streaks texture to multiply, and I'll group the, the streaks texture and the black fill layer below it. And I'll set the blend mode of that group to screen. Now it looks like we've just undone all our progress and uh, we're back at the original image. But actually, the cool thing here is that we can create a new layer between the streaks texture and the black solid and take the pen tool in shape mode with white fill. And now that if we create white shapes on that layer, we show the streaks where we want them to be. And what's what's really good about this technique is that you can come back and customize it however you want at any time since we're using a shape layer instead of um, raster masks. So I can take the direct select tool and drag the points of the 
of the shape stuff like this and to soften the edges I can feather the mask might decrease the feathering so looks a little intense and again I can take the direct select tool and drag around the points to adjust the shape now if I create another shape layer between the black solid and the fractal noise texture I can create another area to show the streaks. That's another advantage of this method. Uh, in where, whereas with a raster mask, uh, it's just like one layer. With this, I can have multiple different shape layers that I can customize on their own. So once I feather the mask of this layer, and uh, maybe expand it. Now I have two areas where I have this anamorphic streaks effect, which I think is pretty cool. Now if, if I come to this texture layer and then apply the offset filter, what I can do is change the vertical offset and basically scroll through the streaks texture find an area that I like that gives me nice looking streaks I think this looks pretty good so I'll hit OK now uh, this is already starting to look pretty good but uh, why don't we take a quick break and uh, read a very long article on lens flares All right, so uh, we're gonna go to Wikipedia, which is a, a trustworthy source. And uh, what's the URL? It's a uh, https colon slash slash n dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash lens underscore flare. And I think this L has to be capitalized. Uh, I heard my friend talking about something called copy and paste, but uh, my friend also happens to uh, never shower because he, uh, uh, he he thinks he'll get a disease from the shower. So uh, I wouldn't really trust him here. All right, a lens flare happens when light is scattered or flared in a lens system, often in, in response to a bright light producing a sometimes undesirable artifact in the image. Oh, shut up! Let's go back to Photopea. Alright, so the effect is looking pretty good, but the colors are all over the place. Like, the streaks shouldn't be a rainbow, unless you have a rainbow light source, and even then, then I don't think the streaks should be a rainbow. Uh, so to colorize them, I'm going to create a gradient map adjustment layer at the top of my group and set its blend mode to color. Now some of you might like to use hue and saturation to colorize effects, but what I can do with a gradient map in blend mode color is set a different color for the highlights and the shadows which is realistically what happens. If you look at something like fire, like the, the darker parts are gonna be more reddish while the brighter parts are gonna be more yellow. That's just kinda how light works. But you can't do that with hue and saturation adjustment layer. That's why I like gradient maps. So I'll set the white to like a cyan and the black to 
a more blue color. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I might darken this up, darken up the whole effect with a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Again, at the top of the group, let's turn down the brightness because uh, we, we just don't want it to be way too bright. And I think the effect is looking pretty good. Let's move on to another example where instead of having the streaks just on the edges of the screen, uh, we actually put it over a light source, like an actual like lens flare effect. So here's an image of a car that I again downloaded from Unsplash, and you can again get in the description. Uh, so once again, I will create a fractal noise set to the X base frequency to zero and uh, add it to document. I'll add my levels. Oh, some like this. Then increase the highlights. I think I brought the mid tones down too much. Hit OK, and then again, put a black solid beneath it, black color fill layer, sorry, and then set the blend mode of the texture to multiply. I'll group these and set the blend mode of the group to screen, and oh no, my effect has disappeared, but once again, I can create white shapes using the pen tool to bring it back. Then I'll feather the mask. Might need to adjust the feather a bit. I don't know, some like a... Uh... Nice. I'll take the direct select tool, adjust the shape as needed. Then create another one of these for the other headlight. Just some like that. Once again, set the feather. And then use a gradient map again for the colorization. Actually, I think I'll make this shape a little bigger. And uh, with the levels here, got to brighten up the streaks a little bit. They're starting to look faded. All right, let's colorize this. Set the blend mode to color and choose a, a more cyan color for the highlights and a bluer color for the shadows. And now we have some pretty nice anamorphic streaks on our car image. I might once again adjust the shapes. You can never do enough adjusting really. Alright, there we have it. We've added some pretty nice anamorphic streaks to our headlights. Here's the before and here's the after. Alright, that's about all I have to say for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you find this technique uh, coming in handy. Uh, be really glad if you used it in some of your own artwork. And be sure to share it in the comments if you do. Anyways, uh, 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.